What were the results? Here we have a survival curve. So at the bottom is time. You have 12 months and 24 months. First of all, the overall thing you know is it's deplorable no matter which way you, you slice it. All right? But there's a huge difference between medical therapy, which is in blue, and surgical therapy in red. At one year's time, there's roughly double the survival in the surgical arm, and at two years' time, about triple. Now, one might say, okay, at two years, 8% or 10% of the medical therapy are alive, and 24% of the surgical therapy are alive. Is that worth this therapy to, get that, to buy that? And some would argue no, and I would argue no. But it showed, it was the first time that showed that this therapy in very sick patients, who before we considered them inoperable for anything, that we could do it. So in summary, higher survival at both one and two years. Their median survival was over a year for the LVAT and 150 days for medical therapy. So triple the survival, roughly. In all, if you put an LVAT in 1,000 patients, 240 people's lives would be saved every year out of that 1,000. This is nearly four times the observed impact of all the medical heart failure trials. What did they die of when they died? In the medical arm, what you'd expect, advanced heart failure, progressive heart failure. In the VAD arm, we saw some interesting things that really taught us what we need to do better. A lot of sepsis. Probably about 40% uh, of deaths were from sepsis. And then a smattering of other things, most importantly, strokes and other issues. So the majority of the adverse events occurred during the perioperative period. So we had to do better with taking care of the patient early post-op. Once the patients got out, their adverse event ratios were pretty good compared to the medical arm. Uh, bleeding was a big complication. Um, with the first generation heart mate, roughly about a third of the patients to half of the patients had to be re-explored. That's changed a lot with the second generation. Infection was big, most of the time because you had this big devascularized pocket and this machine that's always moving around so it doesn't quite sit and settle. And the drive lines were much bigger. The other thing we identified as a result of this trial is the effect of nutrition. And now when we screen patients, we do a lot better job of trying to get them nutritional supplementation before we take them to the OR. We know that the LVAD improves their NYHA class. So here's in yellow is the LVAD, and in blue, which you barely see, is the medical therapy. And this is the percent of patients who are in class one or two heart failure. By one month after surgery, which is pretty early, half the patients are in class one or two. Remember, these were all class four. And then you get out three, six months, somewhere in the 70% range, all right? The remainder are usually in class three. Some of these are class three because they had unsuspected right heart failure, which is significant worry with the LVADs. After enrollment, they did at six month time a whole bunch of scales of their quality of life. Every single one was better in the LVAD group. Median time spent in and out of the hospital. So here is how long they survived. I told you over 400 days versus 150. How long did they spend out of the hospital? Well, of the 400 days, uh, 330 to 340 were spent out of the hospital for the VADs. The vast majority of that time was the post-op stay, which was usually a little bit over a month for the first generation. And you can see that over here. Um, the index hospitalization, so when the patient came in and was randomized, medical therapy were there for maybe a week, you know, got tuned up. The VAD therapy were there for roughly a month or longer. With the newer generation VADs, we're down to an average of two to three weeks, so it's much better. But it's a significant length of stay. Overall, the adverse complications were deemed to be acceptable in the context of how sick these patients were. More importantly, opportunities were identified where we could improve things with the next generation. We saw that the survival was improved markedly and there was improved quality of life. And these were the key take home messages of this study. But also a message was that we could do better. So this publication of this study led the next year to FDA approval for the HeartMate 1 device as an LVAD for destination therapy. So that was nine years ago.